The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the July 18th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I can make that one little two by four shift, that means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. We'd love to hear from you. If you've got a question but you can't call in, you can always send me an email. Send that one off to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our tiger's den, well, then any and every ping will do so let's go ahead and get this show started on terrific tuesday of course this is tiger financial news network i'm steve rhodes welcome to the show right now we got a bit of a mixed bag the mix goes like this the ndx 100 down 51 points three tenths one percent for the semis that's a 39 point move and about two tenths for the nasdaq composite down 22 points otherwise u.s indices are trading to the upside dow's up 377 a little over one percent four tenths for the s p or 16 one percent for the russell 20 points, 2% plus for the trend is S343 and 8 tenths for the New York Stock Exchange. Gold is up 1 and 6 tenths percent. That's a 31 point move. Uh, silver's up 37 cents, 1 and a half percent there. Lights we crewed up a buck 20. Um, uh, that's trading out at 75.27. Natural gas up um, eight pennies, trading out at 259. The 30 year Treasury, 127.06 is the print there. Leading the charge now, dollar wise, the upside, you've got Argenix SE, that's up 32 bucks, nearly 7%. Old Dominion, 5% or 21 bucks. United Health, 19 bucks, 4%. Chipotle, $17 and change, that's an 8% move. And Saya, the freight company, up $17, that's nearly 5%. To the downside, it's must. Simo Corporation down 32 bucks, 22 percent. IDEX Laboratories down two and seven tenths percent, or 15 bucks. Align Technologies down 12. KLA Corp down 11 and change. Appellus Pharmacy down 17 percent. That's a nine dollar move to the downside. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. Only one request so far. Let's do this here. Let's start off our day. My take a look at where are we at with regard to market breadth. Seems like an easy thing to do. More importantly, what's going on with regard to the NASDAQ 100? So let's begin with our 30-minute market breadth speed dials. We can see we've got 213 instruments trading above the top of a 30-minute profile. That means they're trading above resistance versus 80 trading below support. That would be the bottom of the profile. That's the S&P 500. Let's get the read on the NASDAQ 100. NASDAQ 100 Numbers show 28 above, 15 below. So the NASDAQ is bullish for its 30-minute time frame, as is the ES Mini. Let's take a look at those other four time frames. Those are the 60, 240 daily and weekly. And for the S&P 500, oddly enough, it's the S&P that for its 60-minute time frame shows negative market breadth. I didn't expect to see that. And with regard to the NASDAQ 100, it's bullish across the board. So the industry that is struggling the most, let me just make sure that we've got that. Yeah, and it's just barely negative on the 60 minute, 172 above, 176 below. So it's kind of a flat signal with regard. So basically, we got positive market breadth, you'd have to say, across the board for the S&P and for the uh, NASDAQ. So let's go take a look at what's going on there well so let's take a look at peter will ask the question so we'll we'll circumvent that here peter if we take a look at the new york stock exchange the advanced client oscillator what we see here is this thing got into the oversold area 
I'm sorry, overbought level um, back in uh, July the 13th and, and the prior day as well when it got above that plus 150. Price just working off that oversold condition. Now, the last time that we saw a little bit of a decline out here, what we saw was a uh, we saw a declining top. You can see this right back here. Declining top in the advanced decline oscillator. One day does not make that move along with price moving higher. So in essence, the pattern looks like this. Let me just get a green drawing tool out there. Come on, give me, not, uh, here we go, green line. So here you can see we've got rising price right now, potentially in the face of a declining price uh, advanced decline oscillator out there. So if that pattern remains, that's just a signal to expect and anticipate some type of retracement while the overbought condition gets worked off out there. So that's that. What else do I need to show from here? Um, equity futures, there are no new profiles out here to speak of. I don't recall if we were looking at something yesterday. If we were, they did not take hold out here. So the ES Mini above resistance, the same with the NASDAQ, the uh, Russell 2000, the IWM, they have confirmed A to B equals CD pennants with an initial price projection for the Russell 2000 being 2030. And the Dow is now trading above the top of its weekly profile. That's 34,888. So that's suggesting to you and I that it wants to go target. It's a 12, uh, this December 13th, I believe it was December 13th, maybe it was the 15th but the top from 2022 up at the 35,768 area is where that price is likely uh, targeting. So that's it for this set of charts out here. Let's go take a look at my other set of charts. Uh, let's get those over to this version. We're going to change our panels out here momentarily. We'll be on the white screens, and we'll take a look at the ES Mini out here. So if we take just a, a moment in time, the ES Mini upper left-hand side. So you'll see that price is moving higher, doing it with less relative energy. That's what's triggered that Rhodes Mintum indicator uh, black uh, line out there. But that requires a bearish reversal candle to confirm a top. You would never just take that first signal and say, okay, that's your top. It is not that. The way the market communicates to us is it generates those bullish and bearish reversal candles. The beauty is you only need to know seven of them, not like 40 or 50 or 60 or 70 or even 10. You just need to know seven because if you know the seven bullish ones, that means you'll know the seven bearish ones because they're the exact opposite. In the case of the five-hour time frame chart here for the ES Mini, price right now trading above um, it's, uh, it's a topping signal that formed at uh, 5 o'clock yesterday, and a close above 4565.75 will suggest a further move higher. The same is said, the same can be said for the four hour time frame chart, for the two hour time frame chart. So that's the number to be watching there. On a 60 minute basis, I don't see any kind of a top. I see Rhodes Mintum indicator signal that's now been negated out here. Boy, things are looking very bullish for the ES Mini. When I look at even the shortest term time frames, like the 10 minute chart out here, the 10 minute chart shows a negated TD9 count top out here. So it looks to me like we've got at least some more time left in this uh, rally before there's any kind of a uh, pullback. At least I would have to say another, mm, mm, I'd have to go 30 to 60 minutes would be the likely uh, uh, time frame where before you get some type of short term pullback out there. That's what I see when I take a look at those charts for the ES Mini out there. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. No questions yet, although I take that back. We've got uh, we've got two questions, so we'll get to those as soon as we get back from this break. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go take a look at a couple of requests that have uh, come in. Of course, I'd love to hear from you as well at 877-927-6648, or you can send me an email, steve at tfnn.com, and of course, inside the Tiger's Den, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go to a question coming in from uh, Duffy. The first question is take a look at EXK. And EXK right now printing out uh, EXK. Just make sure it's printed out 381 on my white screen. Let me just make sure. Yeah, 383 is what I've got on my other screens out here. Okay, so here's what we know about uh, Endeavor Silver. And it's on a uh, tear. And what it apparently should do out here, uh, Duff, is uh, make a run for $4.21. You're in bar number six of a TD9 count. Uh, now you can see we have been up a number of consecutive days. In fact, today will be bar number five to the upside. So it says to expect and anticipate a retracement. There could be just simply a two bar retracement um, out here. We can see uh, this has had basically this this has not yet had a chance to do any kind of retracement out there. That doesn't mean it's going to start uh, today after today out here, but uh, I'd expect one to start soon. But still looks good. Looks like it wants to target 421 on a weekly basis out here. What we have is price right now is trading above the top of its weekly profile. So this is in change in trend mode. The top of that weekly profile was 339. You closed above it last week. Looks like you'll probably, although it's only Tuesday, close above it this week. So anything can happen. This is suggesting to move up to 426. Now you've got a nice TD9 count bottom on the weekly uh, chart out here. You've got a TD9 count bottom on the daily time frame chart. You've got wave number seven as well out there. Everything looks good. So your next area, your next price targets are fourth. 21, 426, and 456. That's what I see when I take a look at Endeavor out there. But again, uh, pay attention. Uh, when I say pay attention, we should expect, you should anticipate, Duffy, some type of retracement to unfold just simply because of the number of consecutive days the upside. Chances are that may start when we get that confirmed top inside of gold. So that may not take place until tomorrow or the uh, next day out there. So I hope that helps you out with regard to Endeavor Silver. That is on fire. Next request uh, from um, from from. B. Bolt here? 
I think so. So the question was to take a look at the financial sector and uh, gave a number of different uh, symbols out here. I'll focus on two of them. And the first one will be Bank of America. They were out with earnings today. So what do we have here in Bank of America on a daily time frame? We have a B point out here. That B point looks like that formed here on uh, June the 13th. Volume there about 42 million shares. And today so far, you're up with 48 million shares. So now in the case of Bank of America, you've got a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside. So if we take a look at, we'll just kind of draw in here the A to B or the approximate A to B. I'll just simply move that over to the C point out there. And you can see we're beyond the one to one level. So I'll have to do this on my other screen just to give you price projection uh, levels out here. So I'll do that. If you give me just a, a moment, I'll give you where the one to 1.272 is located. Actually, I'll even draw in the better the larger a to b equals well there's several a to b equals cd patterns i'm going to draw in the larger one though first because that's one that's really being taken on i'll show you in a moment so the swing point on that one has 114 million shares i'm going to switch screens over here and then we'll come back so we'll go back and forth so it's really a couple different a, b, a to b equals cd patterns uh, bolt that we could draw in here. The first one that sticks out to me, and really, you know what, now that I draw, I've draw, i drawn it, I say that's not the A to B equals CD pattern because the retracement here was 88%. Once you get beyond 0.786, it really becomes more of a consolidation. But what I did at least see on here with regard to the pattern is here's the swing point price is going into. So Bank of America is headed into the swing point from April 18th. That swing point had 114 million shares. So you've done 52 so far. You're pushing into that swing point with volume, price should at least test that high. And that high out there is $30.93. Now, can we draw in the smaller A to B equals CD? We can. It looks like this, or approximately it looks like this. I'm not sure if that's the correct A point out there. I know the B and C are correct. Uh, it looks like that's the proper A point. So you're beyond the one to one. One to one point two seven two would take you up to three seventy seven. Now, when we look at the weekly time frame charts out here, what we can see is that price is now above the center of that uh, profile. Odds favor a price target of thirty one sixty six. And when we look at the bottom of the monthly profile, we see thirty one seventy one. So you've got a confirmed smaller A to B equal C D to the upside in Bank of America, you've got uh, 3166 as resistance and 3171. And it looks to me like that's where price is headed to. So I hope that helps you out, Bolt. But you also wanted to take a look at other instruments. Let's take a look at the indice. Let's take a look at the ETF, the XLF out here and see what this is doing. Now, the XLF already had an A to B equals CD. It's B point was back from April 19th. The volume there was 39 million shares. When it was passed, it was passed with 52 million shares back on June 15th. It's now at the 1 to 1.272 A to B equals CD price projection area, which is 3525. It looks like that's what it's going to target. Price is trading above the top of its daily profile. That resistance is 3474. So close above that, pretty good odds favor a further move higher. When I take a look at the weekly chart out here, the weekly chart shows us that we are above profile as well. That then suggests that we re that we uh, resort back to the monthly profile. New monthly profile forming now in the month of July with resistance up at 36.43. So we've got two price targets here for the XLF. The first one, 35.25. That's the 1.272 C to D expansion of its A to B leg. And then we have 36.43. That is the uh, top of the uh, monthly profile for the XLF. Let me uh, get the XLF fired up on my other charts just to make sure that we don't have any other top being patterned. Okay, so we do have something to consider out here. So let me come back. I didn't, I'll, I'll put the uh, Bank of America, but I don't recall seeing it for Bank of America, but just to, just to be thorough and make sure. So here on the XLF, what we see out here, Bolt, is we're in bar number eight of a TD9 count. Now, so what does that mean? That says you could get a top that forms between this week and two weeks out from now. So how are we going to know if we get a top there? Well, the easy way to know, or the first signal would be we would get a top on the shorter term time frame. So I'd go back to the daily. If we get a topping signal, on the uh, daily time frame, such as a sell the D point pattern, then that would be telling us or could be telling us uh, on the XLF, we've got that intermediate term uh, top out there. But not until we get that bullish re or bearish reversal candle on the daily time frame do we worry too much about the weekly bar number eight for the XLF. So I hope that helps you out with regard to what you were looking for and that that provided you with the information that you wanted.
um, ELO. Can we take a look at uh, corn? We can look at corn. ZC, I believe we should be in the November contract. Nope, that was not correct. Are we in the uh, uh, shoot, ZC, December contract? Okay. So let's pull up Corny out here. See what we've got going on for corn. Although, uh, is that the active contract? Give me a second here. Where are we at on my stuff? Corn, corn, corn. Uh, September, actually, is the active contract. Let me give you December and uh, September out here. So you wanted to take a look at corn, correct, Yellow? So when we take a look at corn out here, all that I can share with you is that price right now is above the top of its daily profile. This is for the December contract. That's up at 508.80. That suggests to me that we want that this wants to rally further. Rally further to where? That's a great question. 523.79 is a key level of resistance on the weekly time frame that you want to see December 4 and close above. If it does that, then you're up to 560.25. Zeroes with TFN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, so ELO, with regard to corn for the September contract, you can see price right now dealing with resistance at the top of its uh, profile, daily profile. That's up at 514.25. And 518.07 right now is the top of the weekly profile. So the September contract dealing with resistance levels that if it can be, if they can be cleared, uh, would suggest to run up to 526 to 546. So I hope that helps you out. Next question that came in, this came in from... Uh, uh, wrong charts. Give me oh, well, we did get a, a question about that, but we'll come back to that. First question coming in from Hector. Hector wanted to take a look at IWO, Happy Taco, two for Tuesday, IWO and XLE, and like A to B equals CD, price projection areas. So that being the case, Steve, you should have read the question. I'm going to switch over to the black background charts, uh, Hector, so we can take like I've got the better A to B equals CD tool there. So let's move over here. Let's take a look at IWO. And I not be I, that won't work. IWO, though, will go ahead and pull up the uh, symbol. That is the iShares uh, 2000 growth ETF out here. So we take a look for the A to B equals CD patterns. What we really have out here, Hector, is we really have a consolidation inside the weekly time frame chart. So that's the bigger pattern out here. Right? If I've tried on a weekly basis, I don't the here if, if I the A point would have to be down here on June 13th. The B point would have to be the high that formed on August 15th. And then the C point would probably be the low. It's either the, from the week of September 26th or uh, October 10th. Right now it doesn't matter which one I use. We're going to be at 84%. So we get below 0.786 um, really, the A to B equals CD patterns kind of go out the uh, door here. So instead, what we do have is you've got a uh, consolidation pattern. It looks like a consolidation pattern. The price is trying to break through. And as you know, that would give you a measured move. That measured move would take you up into the 293 level. And that's coming from the weekly time frame chart. When I look at the daily chart, certainly there we can draw some A to B equals CD patterns. But really, we can't. I mean, we could do anything we want, but look, we're, we're just we're dealing again with this low all the way back here from June and then that retracement all the way back in here. So not really a great for the A to B equals CD patterns out here, Hector. The second one that you wanted to look at, but you do have that uh, consolidation breakout. You wanted the energy sector, the XLE. So let's pull up the XLE. I still have the uh, daily time frame chart up and you wanted A to B equals CD patterns here, too. Wow. OK, so. I don't have anything that I can really show you. When I take a look at this daily chart, so in the daily chart, we really have that same thing. If I were to try to draw an A to B equals CD to the upside out here, well, I'm using the swing point from uh, June 2nd, and then it pulls all the way back in that swing point on June 23rd. So no A to B equals CD there. If I were to try to make it to the downside, well, I've got to get price to close below that swing point for March 16th. So happy two for Tuesday. Daily A to B equals CD price projections, please. This I'm on the daily. There isn't one. So what we do have with regard to the XLE now, let me, uh, so I'm going to go back now to the white background charts. So we'll take a look at the patterns for those two instruments that uh, may be important. So the first one is IWO. Top, bar number nine on a weekly basis. So this says we should see a TD9 count top that completes, forms, forms this week and completes next week. So what would we be looking for in the IWO? Maybe a TD9 count top there as uh, well. Let's take a look at the uh, second instrument, which was the energy sector, XLE. Let's see what kind of patterns we have here. And here we don't have any pattern to speak of, per se. Consolidation with inside the uh, weekly profile. That's really about it. So Hector and Patty, I hope that helped you out as best I could with regard to XLE and uh, the uh, – XLE and the IWO. Nancy is asking the question, will Apple resume its move higher? You know, Nancy, uh, the answer to that will be determined based upon where price closes. Price, What price did yesterday was try to take out. In fact, it did. It closed above resistance. That was the top of its profile, 193.53. We're trading back at that area right now. So price is up here where the sellers are at. If anything proved that point to you yesterday, it's the price action today. So you're asking, well, resume its rally. And Stevie says at this date here, I don't know. Price has got to overcome. It's got to close above at least the oscillator and change line, let's say. And that's going to be up at the 193.84-ish area out here. With regard to the weekly time frame chart, we've got no top. The only way we get a top is if Apple this week is able to exceed 194.48. The high so far for the week, 194.32. So it's missed it by a smidgen. So now, Nancy, if you do get that rally this week, 
and you get a move above what's listed as bar number seven on that weekly chart, you're then going to trigger a potential weekly. You're going to complete a TD9 count pattern on a weekly basis out there. So um, I, I just want you to prepare for that, that Apple could. We don't have that signal just yet, but what to be able to watch for. So your question was, will it resume its upward move today? My answer is right now, no, because price is blocked by those sellers that are sitting at the top of the profile. That gave you and I a competitive advantage that others didn't have. So I hope that helps you out with regard to Apple. Thanks so much for the request. Uh, we took care of corn. So now we need to go to GBHPH's question. And that was to take a look at the intraday charts here for Goldilocks. So let's pull that up on our screen. But before we do that, GPHPH, we've got to take a look at bar number eight that is now completed inside of gold for, well, it, it will at day's end, or it should at day's end, unless we see some kind of wicked sell off here. Now, I wasn't too sure. I would look up, you, you know, you all know that I'm, I'm a, a big bull gold. I think gold has made a major, did I say major? A major bottom out here time will tell right but in this case here now it looks like what gold is signaling to you and i is we're getting ready for a timeout and that timeout could occur anytime between today and thursday as it goes on to complete a td9 count top tomorrow all that needs to take place for gold and this must happen this is a must it's not a maybe gold must close tomorrow above 1963.80 if it does that you will then have a confirmed td9 count top that pattern will complete on the following day that would be on thursday when i look at the five hour chart no topping signal there nice not td9 count bottom the same on the four hour time frame chart uh, we did get a uh, on the two hour time frame chart we are right now in what could be a td9 count topping pattern formation we are in the bar following bar number nine this bar will complete in uh, at uh, 12 noon in 23 minutes out there any other topping signals and the answer is no well, yeah, yeah, I've got one on a 15-minute basis, but I'm not going to worry about the 15-minute uh, chart out here. So with regard to Goldilocks, I know you wanted to look at the intraday. And so from an intraday standpoint, it looks like we still have a further move higher, although you got to keep your eye on that two-hour time frame chart because that is a valid top that is going to complete in another 22 minutes out there. So I hope that helps you out, GPHW, with regard to gold. Tim wrote in, he wants to take a look at the onion, O-N-O-N. -O -N. So let's get back to my other charts. Let's get this populated, and let's actually go back now and read the question. This came in by email, and the question goes like this from Tim M. Good morning. Could you please take a look at O-N-O-N, -O -N, the running shoes out there. You're long that position. Please look at support levels for daily and weekly. Support level for daily is going to be old resistance, the top of that profile. That price is trading above 33.29. That's going to be your area of support on the daily. No resistance right now that sticks out. Well, support on the weekly could be $34. That's the top of its weekly profile. Price is trading above it. Right now, because the week's not over, that's also resistance. So your resistance level on the weekly is 34. You close above 34. That could become support. Again, you got 33.29 as support on the daily time frame, And a new weekly, a new monthly profile that we'll talk about when we get back as we take a look at the running shoes, O-N, O-N. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Look at the stock chart here for on the uh, the uh, gym shoes that are out there. I have a pair, and uh, I got the new pair. I, I, I like them. I don't think they're great for running, though. Um, you know, and I, I don't run that much these days. I ride a bike, so. Uh, uh, but uh, I, I don't. I think uh, Brooks are, you know, uh, are better for 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 running than these shoes. But that's not what the question is. The question: What is the stock chart doing here? So it forms a nice TD nine count bottom. Does this back on uh, May the twenty fifth? That runs up to form a TD nine count top. Does that on June 9th? Price pulls back into its bullish structured profile at that time on a daily basis, and now it's in an A to B equals CD pattern. So what you're watching for here, Tim, is a bearish reversal candle. If you get a bearish reversal candle, that will set up a sell the D point pattern. Right now, price is taken on a weekly swing point. The weekly swing point was May the 5th. That had a volume there of 16 million. So far, you are already up with um, 9.5 million. So it looks like it's pushing to that swing point with volume. Now, if price closes above that, you'll have an A to B equals CD to the upside. I can share with you that the one to one price projection would be 44.48, which would then get us back to the TD9 count breakdown resistance level at 40.22. So, what do we say about on? On is pushing into a weekly swing point that could form an A to B equal CD to the upside. It needs to close about 34.88 at week's end. The daily chart is bullish, but if a bearish reversal candle were to form, that would confirm a sell the D point pattern out there. Price above uh, resistance out there at 33.29. Only if price were to get below that, would that uh, sell the D point should it unfold, really gain any kind of traction out there. So that's what I see when we take a look at ONON. -O -N. The next request is a take a look at NTRS. This is for John Z. NTRS. So let's get that here on the uh, screen. And uh, give me a moment. Oh my goodness, how do I get out of that? There we go. And the next question from John Z. Yikes, small text. Uh, Northern Trust and TRS. If you could bring up your longer term charts, NTRS doesn't seem to want to fall below 69. I want to see NTRS go to 100. They report tomorrow. What price would you buy NTRS if you wanted to hold on to it for a year? So, NTRS. Hmm. Which, so let me see what screen I'm on. I'm okay. I'm on the white background screen. N T R S. What? What would I want to? Why would I want to buy N T R S? Hmm. 
So at best case here, John, you've got a consolidation. I'm at best case. So I'm going to open up the daily time frame chart. We can see here that uh, this formed a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom back here. It actually formed on May the 15th. Uh, the low out there, it's a key low, is 69.54. You get below, you close below 69.54, and this is uh, this is this would be major trouble out here. So it forms that bottom, moves higher, moves back to retest that low, moves back up higher. We're now retesting that low. That low or those bottoms out there again. The volume was about one million shares. We came down into that a few days ago. Let's find out how much volume we came into it a few days ago, two days ago to be specific with 2.8 million shares. So this is moving into a swing, but this is just a consolidation. So you're asking me where would I buy a consolidation pattern at at the bottom of the consolidation, where it was yesterday. Would I want to? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but but that's the answer to your question. Where would you buy it You know, from a long-term hold? The problem with that is there's no long-term bottoming patterns out here that are worthwhile. You can see the real consolidation on the weekly chart. You can see that 7586 level. John Z, how that is a key resistance area. So I'm just not feeling it here with NTRS, but to answer your specific question, where would you buy it? You would have bought it basically at yesterday's low. You could still do that here if you've really got a hankering uh, for NTRS. Best of luck to you there. Anne writes in, I meant that in a good way. Uh, Anne writes in and she says, hey, Steve, I'm learning a lot from your expertise and love your show. Well, great. That's great. Thank you for uh, listening. Uh, I think I heard you say that gold might chop around in the next couple of days and then retrace downward a bit. Yes, I, I, I sort of said that. We covered that. My question is, is it too late to try to get into GDX at 3130 as you were back into the other day, or do you think there may be another chance to get in at the lower price than today? So that's a great question. I don't know the answer to that. But let's pull up the charts here, specifically for the GDX, which you asked about. So we covered gold, so we don't need to go back and take a look at that. The pattern, again, that we're looking at there is a TD9 count top that on the daily time frame should form between today and Thursday out there. And that's the reason that, as Anne is saying, here stevie is expecting a retracement now that retracement may just be two days out here with regard to the gdx this has a confirmed a to b equals cd to the upside it doesn't have it's trading above resistance levels out here there's a new daily uh profile that formed yesterday i didn't realize that and price is trading above right now at 3240 so what gdx suggests to us that it wants to do is move up to its breakdown level at 3535 the weekly time frame chart is trading above the top of a new profile as well. That formed this week, last week. How about that? 3240. So this is all really strong stuff. That's suggesting that GDX wants to make a move to 3581. But what you and I know, Ann, is that uh, gold and uh, the uh, GDX typically, not always, but typically move in tandem with each other. So when I enter a long position now in the GDX, Knowing that gold is likely to form a TD9 count top between today and Thursday. The answer is I would not. And what I would wait for is I'd wait to see if that top takes place. We'll know tomorrow. I'd then wait to buy a pullback out there. And what you're probably looking at is like a, a two-day, one-day, two-day uh, pullback out there, at least at this stage of the game. But what you'd really want to do, and you'd really want to be focused on the gold chart. If gold then makes that bottom, makes a you know two-day pullback, one-day pullback, and gives us the pattern on a shorter-term time frame, that would really be the time then to enter a new position or add to an existing position inside of GDX. You have a question about pass as well. What's a good entry point and how might it go? So again, the same kind of scenario there with regard to pass. That's now we're primarily dealing with silver. Silver doesn't have the same type of topping pattern, but gold and silver will usually, not always, usually trade in the same direction. So if gold is going to form a top, even though silver doesn't have that topping signal, odds favor not guarantee that it too will pull back but we take a look at pan american silver price is likely targeting 1847 here at 1668 no topping signal there weekly chart much like we just took a look at with um what did we look at the xlf it's trading about the top of its monthly weekly profile it's 1594 and its next level of resistance is really the monthly time frame you can see it with regard to pan american silver let me open this chart up here that the oscillator and change line has been resistant since june of 2021 so if we get a close above that line, that line, by the way, is currently printed out at 
A1682, that will change just slightly. But if we get it close above that red line, that oscillator and change line, that will also be signaling to an eye that Pan American Silver has turned the corner, it has a change in trend, and to continue to move higher, and then you would be looking to buy retracements out there. Um, so where's a good entry point? Uh, you know, this is going to be bar number three of, of uh, consecutive uh, higher moves out there. So this too should be getting ready for a retracement or a pullback in the next couple of days. So I just think I think this is the area that you want to focus in on, and you're, you're, you're good to go there. And let's wait to see what happens with regard to a Goldilocks over the next few days out there before you take any action. That's my current thinking. I hope that that helps you out. And thanks so much for taking the time to write in. James writes in, and he wants to take a look at Microsoft. So let's get Microsoft up on our screen, MSFT. MSFT, see if we can do this before the break. Hey, Steve, uh, would you analyze Microsoft and what would be a good entry point there? Okay, uh, Microsoft right now looks like it wants to go tag its recent high. It's trading above profile in its green oscillator and change line. So it looks to me like it wants to go tag that high from June 16th. That's up at the 351.47. Volume there was 46 million. So far today, it's done 10 million. It's a little bit light in loafers. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So again, you take a look at Microsoft here. The important thing to be watching on Microsoft uh, this week is can Microsoft spike above 351.47? The high today is 350. Oh, it already has 351.85. So Microsoft is actually going to complete a TD9 count top by Friday for its weekly time frame. 
you know, the NQ is doing the same thing, same pattern. It's going to form, I believe it's bar number nine. I, I, mean, I, I think we're looking at a top inside the NQ and the ES. So and you know, see this in Microsoft. So to really answer your question out there, James, I'm not going to give you any entry point out here. I think we're getting close to a top and you know, the type of top that could that could take us lower into October out there. I mean, that's a standard seasonal pattern out here, and we're seeing enough signals on the weekly time frame or the intermediate time frames for enough charts to just say, you know, now is the time to be uh, cautious out there. The last instrument uh, request here from Dan inside the Tiger's Den is to take a look at GSM. So as we take a look at this stock chart here, we can see that price is trading with inside its daily profile right now. The support level is down at 478. The resistance area, which is under attack right now, is up at 502. We're trading out really at 501. So 502 is a level to watch, Dan. If price can clear that, then we're likely headed up to 516, the TD nine count breakdown area. Weekly chart has a uh, profile level at 530. So if you can close about 502, two consecutive sessions, you're up to 516. You get about 516, Dan, you're off to 530. The monthly chart is sitting right at resistance. That's the oscillator and change line. So it's kind of stalling here. We've seen the stall pattern over the last couple of trading sessions, maybe three out of the last four out here. If we were wondering why, we couldn't have figured that out from the weekly chart, but we most certainly can figure that out and take in a look at the uh, monthly time frame chart out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at uh, GSM. So folks, thanks so much for joining me here. I've got to uh, run. I've got an appointment that I've got to uh, get to, but please stay tuned. We've got great programming lined up. I'll be back with you tomorrow on wonderful Wednesday. Please have a terrific Tuesday. Thanks again.